Chapter 8. Decision. The Mastery of Procrastination. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million-dollar mark. Disclose the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing these decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who fail to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly, and of changing these decisions quickly and often. The majority of people who fail to accumulate money sufficient for their needs are, generally, easily influenced by the opinions of others. They permit the newspapers and the gossiping neighbors to do their thinking for them. Opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. Everyone has a flock of opinions ready to be wished upon anyone who will accept them. If you are influenced by opinions when you reach decisions, you will not succeed in any undertaking, much less in that of transmuting your own desire into money. If you are influenced by the opinions of others, you will have no desire of your own. Keep your own counsel when you begin to put into practice the principles described here, by reaching your own decisions and following them. Take no one into your confidence, except the members of your mastermind group, and be very sure in your selection of this group, that you choose only those who will be in complete sympathy and harmony with your purpose. Close friends and relatives, while not meaning to do so, often handicap one through opinions and sometimes through ridicule, which is meant to be humorous. Thousands of men and women carry inferiority complexes with them all through life, because some well-meaning but ignorant person destroyed their confidence through opinions or ridicule. You have a brain and mind of your own. Use it and reach your own decisions, if you need facts or information from other people, to enable you to reach decisions, as you probably will in many instances. Acquire these facts or secure the information you need quietly, without disclosing your purpose. It is characteristic of people who have but a smattering or a veneer of knowledge to try to give the impression that they have much knowledge. Such people generally do too much talking and too little listening. Keep your eyes and ears wide open and your mouth closed, if you wish to acquire the habit of prompt decision. Those who talk too much do little else. If you talk more than you listen, you not only deprive yourself of many opportunities to accumulate useful knowledge, but you also disclose your plans and purposes to people who will take great delight in defeating you because they envy you. Remember also that every time you open your mouth in the presence of a person who has an abundance of knowledge, you display to that person your exact stock of knowledge or your lack of it. Genuine wisdom is usually conspicuous through modesty and silence. Keep in mind the fact that every person with whom you associate is, like yourself, seeking the opportunity to accumulate money. If you talk about your plans too freely, you may be surprised when you learn that some other person has beaten you to your goal by putting into action ahead of you, the plans of which you talked about unwisely. Let one of your first decisions be to keep a closed mouth and open ears and eyes. The value of decisions depends upon the courage required to render them. The great decisions which served as the foundation of civilization were reached by assuming great risks, which often meant the possibility of death. Socrates' decision to drink the cup of poison, rather than compromise in his personal belief, was a decision of courage. It turned time ahead a thousand years, and gave to people then unborn, the right to freedom of thought and of speech. The decision of General Robert E. Lee, when he came to the parting of the way with the Union, and took up the cause of the South, was a decision of courage, for he well knew that it might cost him his own life, that it would surely cost the lives of others. But the greatest decision of all time, as far as any American citizen is concerned, was reached in Philadelphia, July 4, 1776, when 56 men signed their names to a document which they well knew would bring freedom to all Americans, or leave every one of the 56 hanging from a gallows. We read the history of the Revolution and falsely imagined that George Washington was the father of our country, that it was he who won our freedom while the truth is, Washington was only an accessory after the fact because victory for his armies had been ensured long before Lord Cornwallis surrendered. This is not intended to rob Washington of any of the glory he so richly merited. Its purpose, rather, is to give greater attention to the astounding power that was the real cause of his victory. It is nothing short of tragedy that the writers of history have missed, entirely, even the slightest reference to the irresistible power, which gave birth and freedom to the nation destined to set up new standards of independence for all the peoples of the earth. I say it is a tragedy because it is the same power which must be used by every individual who surmounts the difficulties of life and forces life to pay the price asked. Analyze the events which led to the Declaration of Independence 
and be convinced that this nation, which now holds a position of commanding respect and power among all nations of the world, was born of a decision created by a mastermind, consisting of 56 men. Note well the fact that it was their decision which ensured the success of Washington's armies, because the spirit of that decision was in the heart of every soldier who fought with him, and served as a spiritual power which recognizes no such thing as failure. Note also that the power which gave this nation its freedom is the same power that must be used by every individual who becomes self-determining. This power is made up of the principles described in this book. It will not be difficult to detect in the story of the Declaration of Independence at least six of these principles, desire, decision, faith, persistence, the mastermind and organized planning. Throughout this philosophy will be found the suggestion that thought, backed by strong desire, has a tendency to transmute itself into its physical equivalent. Before passing on, I wish to leave with you the suggestion that one may find in this story, and in the story of the Organization of the United States Steel Corporation, a perfect description of the method by which thought makes this astounding transformation. In your search for the secret of the method, do not look for a miracle, because you will not find it. You will find only the eternal laws of nature. These laws are available to every person who has the faith and the courage to use them. They may be used to bring freedom to a nation or to accumulate riches. There is no charge, save the time necessary to understand and appropriate them. Those who reach decisions promptly and definitely know what they want and generally get it. The leaders in every walk of life decide quickly and firmly. That is the major reason why they are leaders. The world has the habit of making room for the man whose words and actions show that he knows where he is going. Definiteness of decision always requires courage, sometimes very great courage. The 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence staked their lives on the decision to affix their signatures to that document. The person who reaches a definite decision to procure the particular job and make life pay the price he asks does not stake his life on that decision. He stakes his economic freedom, financial independence, riches, desirable business and professional positions are not within reach of the person who neglects or refuses to expect, plan and demand these things. This concludes the chapter 8. Summary of Think and Grow Rich. Thanks for watching.